Meet Amy. Amy wants to look more youthful, but there are currently four hair mistakes that are standing in her way. If you're new to this series, it's very simple. Folks send me emails asking how they can get a more youthful look, and then I walk through exactly what hair mistakes they're currently making, much more important, how they can correct those mistakes, and what it will look like when they do, and at the very end, I throw in a little curveball, something that's random, I don't know, maybe they'll love it, maybe they'll hate it, but all of this is based on an email that they send me, so... Let's read Amy's email. Okay, now, if you're not new to this series, then why don't you head down to the comment section and see if you can find the mistakes that I'm seeing with her hair right now. Her email reads, Hi, Justin. Thanks in advance for any help you can provide. My hair is naturally dark brown, fine with thin density, wavy, and layered with blended copper and caramel highlights. I feel like my face looks short and square. I feel like my bangs are needed to complement my eyes, but I wonder if they're dragging the look of my face now. I like to find a cut that flatters my face and also gives my fine hair volume in the right places and movement. Right now, I think the layers are too long and weighing my hair down. I've been watching your videos and see you refer to an angled cut as being helpful. Would that work for my hair as well? Does it need to go shorter? I typically heat style straight with my blow dryer and round brush. I rarely let it be curly because I feel like getting it to look good while wavy is hit and miss. I thought if maybe I had a bob at the right length with the volume and body in the right places, maybe I could wear it wavy more often. If that works well too. I would just really like to find a cut that is most flattering. Thank you again for any help you can provide. I'm not gonna lie, it feels kind of good to be back out again. If you aren't new, you're probably like, oh, this is normal. If you're new, you're trying to figure out why I'm outside in the middle of the woods. It's a normal thing, trust me, uh, and it feels good. I'm glad. Okay, mistake number one is that the sides are just layered too much. Now, this is a very common thing when it comes to bobs, and I see it and talk about it all the time. But if we look at the profile photo here, that thinness on the sides because of that overlayering takes away the whole feeling of a bob. It takes away that bob line. The bigger concern is that it's actually bringing the eye down the shape towards the back versus lifting the eye up the shape, which will help lift our face. This is actually an interesting situation because it's actually causing a problem from the profile, but from the front, it's actually not a problem. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. For now, what if we did add that fullness back into the sides? This is what that would look like. Now, as you can see from the profile, this looks much more like a bob shape and is definitely moving in the right direction. But if we look at the front of the style, it actually adds more fullness to the bottom and starts to bring the eye down the shape versus lifting it up. Whereas if we look at the before, having that little bit of extra volume right above the cheekbone area actually lifts the eye up more. Now, don't worry, we're going to address how to deal with with this part of the concern a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's move on to mistake number two. Because I cannot wait to show you the curveballs. The last one you're either gonna love or absolutely hate. You're definitely gonna have an opinion on it. Actually, wait, love it or hate it? <laughs> you hate it? I don't, I don't love it. You don't love it? <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what you think. Stick around. <laughs> wow, you don't love it really? Really, wow. Sorry, Sorry Amy. Okay, now mistake number two is that the angle is just too parallel to the floor. Now, I talk about this all the time as well. When it comes to bobs, we really want to kind of focus that angle to be more parallel to the bone structure of our face, our cheekbones and our jawbone, because this is really going to help to lift that eye up again instead of pulling it back down. The minute we have it paralleling the floor, as you can see in this profile photo right here, it starts to actually look like it's almost a little bit longer in the back and it draws that eye down again. So if we were to angle that a little little bit more to Amy's face shape, this is what that would look like. Now, as you can see, this is going a long way into actually starting to lift that eye up, even though we're really not changing the overall length all that much. It's a little bit to go a long way. Now, I think I'm going to talk about the rest of the mistakes right here because uh, if you know me, that view doesn't suck. Actually, it's right here too. That view doesn't suck. <laughs> I like it. Little snow. This is really nice, actually. Okay, now mistake number three was actually something that Amy said in her email, which was that she's fearful that the layers are just too long. Now, she's not wrong, but she's also not right. <laughs> so the layers are a little bit too long, but they're not too long compared to the length. If we were to take those layers shorter and leave the length alone, she could end up with layers that don't balance with the length and end up actually being too short. What happens then is you get this little cap of volume on top, like you see here, and it actually indents right around the temple where we really want to create a little bit more volume to help accentuate cheekbone structure. And that actually creates more of a problem than we're addressing by the fact that we took the layers shorter because they felt too long. If we were to actually bring that length 
up, it would allow us more room to take those layers a little bit shorter and still balance. Really the concern is what's going on right now is there's just too much fullness at the bottom. Now this is the same kind of thing that we were talking about earlier where once we started letting that side fill in, it started to get a little bit more fullness and it started to bring the shape down. We need to pull some of that fullness back out of the back area and that will help to actually start draw that eye up and it'll actually make it look like there's more volume on top even when there's not. Now to really kind of drive this point home, this is what it looks like from the profile when we only take volume out of the bottom without adding any more volume to the top whatsoever. But you can see that once we do that, it creates this illusion or this optical illusion that I always talk about that there's more volume on top even when there's not. Just because we took volume out of one area, it looks like there's more volume in another area. And from the front, it's creating more volume around the temple area. And it's helping to take some of that squareness and the fullness out of her face shape that she had mentioned being concerned about in her email. Okay, now mistake number four, and to be completely honest, I'm not even entirely sure if this is truly a mistake, but I'm going to pretend that it is, and it's that the color is just a little too warm. Now, I know that Amy did mention that she has some copper tones put into it, and they do have a tendency to be a little bit on the warmer side, but it's giving off a little bit of an orange feel, and that's kind of pulling some of the richness from her skin tone. Now, again, this could be just the photo, the camera itself, just the white balance kind of being off, or the lighting or something, but I want to address it as though this is truly happening, just to help you understand what could be going on with your hair. So if we did actually cool these tones down a little bit, this is what it would look like. Now, admittedly, this is not a massive change, but I always say that it's the small things that add up to create a larger impact. And if we look, it just adds a little bit more richness to my skin tone. And to me, just kind of overall feels more cohesive. Now, with all that said though, I want to talk about something else that Amy mentioned in her email, and that was a little thing about her bangs. Bangs should Amy actually wear, and should she be wearing bangs at all? Amy mentioned that she feels like she needs to have bangs to kind of draw attention to her eyes, which I think is fantastic. One, that she recognizes that, and two, because I agree, one of the first things I noticed, I don't know about you, comment and let me know if you saw the same thing, but one of the first things that I noticed was her eyes. She's got beautiful eyes. Bangs are a great idea. They absolutely are kind of the window to the eye. They definitely bring focus to it, but at the same time, we have to have the correct bangs for your face shape. Now, Amy mentioned that her face shape to her felt a little bit square and maybe a little bit on the fuller side. And she's not wrong, but if we actually take a look right here at her face without any hair on it, we see that her face isn't long, but it actually is a little bit on the longer side. Now, again, this is a great place for bangs, but let's imagine that we do a very strong bang that really typically brings a lot of focus to the eye. Well, this is what that looks like. Now, aside from the horrible photoshopping here, which is extremely evident, so look past that, this is way too too strong, way too thick, and way too closing off to Amy's face. It actually adds more squareness and more fullness to it. But if we were to actually take those bangs away, for good reason, and just give her a side sweat bang that just offered a little bit of cover to her forehead, but also brought a little bit more attention to her eyes, this is what that would look like. Now, as you can see, this actually does a great job of still taking some of the length out of her face, but not adding any width to it, while still bringing a little bit more focus to those beautiful eyes. So it's kind of a win-win. That's the way I would go with bangs. But now we've got something even better the curveballs. I've got three of them. One of them, I promise you, like I said before, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I can't wait. So the first curveball, I wanted to show her a bob that she could wear that was a little different. She did mention in her email that she prefers to wear them straight, so I just wanted to give her an idea of kind of a different style of straight bob. And so I came up with this. Now this is a lot sleeker, but the reason I like it is because it actually tapers in those sides still. Even though it's a little on the flatter and sleeker side, those sides aren't really full, which means that they're not creating a lot of fullness down around her her cheeks or bringing the eye down. It's still having a tendency to lift the eye up. And you might also notice that I went a little bit more red with this. And that's because since she already is moving into the copper tones that I figured well, she probably would be willing to do something a little bit different with the color, maybe a little bit different kind of red. So I wanted to try something. This is a little bit on the cooler side versus a warmer red, but I really like it. Now she also mentioned that she would love to wear a wavy style if she had the right shape of a bob to do it. I wanted to show her the kind of length and shape that I would recommend as far as bobs go if she was going to do it wave. And so this is what I came up with. Now what I like about this is the length is a little bit on the longer side. So if she were to straighten this out, this would be a little bit longer than where the last curveball was or definitely where she's at right now. But I think that as a wavy look, this works really well. It still kind of brings the eye up the shape versus pulling the eye down the shape because there's still less volume because of all the layering. There's still a side sweat bang to help kind of offset any of the length in her face. So this to me really still accentuates all the things that we want to accentuate without kind of adding any of the concerns that Amy was having. And I personally really like this look. I think when it comes to a wavy style, tucking it back off of her ear on one side really does
does a lot for kind of opening her face up still and not kind of adding too much of that width. So I would kind of move towards that direction, but I love this as an idea for a wavy bob. Now, we are on to curveball number three, and this is where rubber hits the road, I guess is what they would say. Like I said, you're either going to love it or hate it, but let's talk about it. This is it. <laughs> okay, I'm aware this is extremely short by comparison to anything else that she was talking about, but I like this still because it's a totally different look. It is definitely a curveball, but it still doesn't have the fullness on the sides, so it's still kind of bringing that line up towards the temple, which is still accentuating her cheekbone structure, and I think it's a really cool look for her. I think it's something completely different, but I definitely think she could rock it. But you know how I roll. I'm always curious about you. What do you think about it? So comment below and let me know. Which way do you think she should go? She should just address the concerns like we did originally, or she should dive into one of these three curveballs. And if so, which one? <laughs> Do you love or hate number three? Why am I asking that? Okay, <laughs> after you're done there, go ahead and watch this video right here, because uh, if you like this, you're going to love this. All right, and I'll see you next week. Don't forget, that view does not suck. Just like these views today do not suck. All right, bye.